The sound of that alone was better than six hours of WrestleMania 32. That's your review. Have a good night. I can sit here and drink this beer for 40 minutes and it will be better than anything that I've seen on WrestleMania 32 tonight. And you'll watch me. Because I know there's going to be some fucking goon in the crowd who was there, who's going to come watch this fucking review, who's going to call me a fucking asshole. I know there's going to be some fucking little Indian boy who is age 11, who can't spell Roman Reigns' name correctly, cursing me out. Go fuck self. Akbar Ulazizuzibisizuzi is his name. He'll come to me and ask me, where's the pay-per-view? I came here for the matches. Okay. No magic eight ball needed tonight, folks. What did I tell you I was going to do? Let's backtrack about two weeks. Let's backtrack about two months. Let's backtrack about two fucking years. Said I was going to sit here with my glasses on, pop open a cold Guinness, and utter the words, I told you so. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be upset. All I can tell you is that I was right. And you're going to watch, and you're going to listen to every fucking word that I have to say because you can't help yourself. I'm going to get 400,000 views on this video. I don't give a shit what you say. I don't. I'm not being cocky. I'm not being arrogant. I don't. I've been watching WWE for 30 years. 30 fucking years. WWE has had a difficult time booking WrestleMania. They've had a difficult time putting together a WrestleMania, which was supposed to be the biggest WrestleMania of all time. 85,000 in attendance, folks, not 101. This was supposed to be the biggest spectacle that WWE has ever put on. What we seen tonight was one of the worst WrestleManias of all time, ever. You had 32 editions of this event. This is in the top three. Worst of all time. Cena Miz, whatever else you want to fucking put up there. WrestleMania 9. This is up there. This is up there, man. This is close to taking the cake for... The worst of all time. Uh, we can't be upset what we've seen tonight. We can't be upset about what we've seen tonight. We can't. Roman Reigns is a WWE champion. The only thing that we can be upset about is, again, WWE took no risks. They took no chances. This was going to signify the end of WWE's proverbial season. Just like how a baseball season ends, just like how a fucking basketball season ends, things end. This was the end of WrestleMania season. They didn't conclude anything. They didn't give you a tease about what's to come on Monday Night Raw. They didn't build on anything that would bleed in to the rest of the fucking year. No Lesnar Wyatt. Nothing. No Balor. No Goldberg. Cena comes back. No Rollins. No Cesaro. No Orton. They didn't build towards anything. They didn't build off the frustration between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Nothing. Wyatt family got buried. The show went past 11 o'clock, which I was completely stunned by. They gave us an extra 45 minutes 
Meanwhile, I'm losing an extra 45 minutes of fucking sleep to give you this review. The Rock came back, and he planned something big. Nothing happened. Nothing happened that fucking made me jump out of my seat. Shane McMahon and The Undertaker, no interference whatsoever. All these plans, all these brilliant ideas, all these fucking scenarios that we talked about for fucking six weeks, and nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. They went in vanilla, and they came out vanilla. Nothing happened here. Everything that we thought was going to happen, didn't happen. And then WWE wants to laugh about it. Oh, ha ha ha, the YWC, the IWC, we got one over on them. Like they're fucking scheming in a cave somewhere. Ha 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 You thought you could predict us. Ha 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 Give me a fucking break. Nothing that they did made sense tonight. We can't be upset. We can't be upset. Of course, I had the typical goons come out of the fucking cave that they were living in. All pimply-faced. They got done jerking off to fucking Pornhub.com. Then they want to come to my fucking Twitter. Well, if you don't like the product, stop watching it. That's what I hear all night. Don't like the product, stop watching it. Instant bench. Bench Boulevard. Take a stroll. Population is adding up very quickly, man. This WrestleMania was a fucking complete joke. I, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for anybody that sat in that crowd. Seriously. What did we see tonight? I can't even... The, listen. Shane McMahon falling off a cell. Jumping through the fucking table. It's not going to save WrestleMania. Charlotte... Becky and Sasha could have went fucking 45 minutes. Would have did nothing to save this show. Nothing. AJ Styles and Chris Jericho could have went fucking an hour in a submission match. Wouldn't have saved the show. Goldberg, Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy, and Rob Van Dam could have fucking showed up for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And just fucking decimate everybody. Wouldn't have saved the show. Wouldn't have saved the show. Triple H could have won the WWE title and slayed Roman Reigns. Wouldn't have saved the show. Jesus Christ himself could have fucking had his second coming right in the middle of that fucking arena tonight and shed light upon everybody's fucking life. It wouldn't have saved the show. Seriously. We could have had a live sex scene with Edge and Lita. Part two. It wouldn't have saved the show. You guys get my point. This was one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. If you do not agree with me, suck my cock. Seriously. You are a fucking goon, grade A, right off the fucking meat rack, goon. Because I know I'm going to have some fucking idiot in the comment section. Oh, JD, you're so negative. You're so negative, man. Yeah, I'm negative. I pay $9.99 for WrestleMania. 98% of you fucking watched it for free. I'm paying my money to watch WrestleMania and subscribe to the network. I deserve a product worthy of the name WrestleMania. What we got was not WrestleMania, people. It was a Monday Night Raw that was six hours long with fireworks that probably cost Vince McMahon in the neighborhood of eight million dollars. That's just a fucking guess. I have no idea what he paid for the fucking fireworks that went off. But is Roman Reigns worth three million dollars worth of fireworks? Roman Reigns ain't even fucking worth a fucking ticket sale for Sunday Night Heat. Never mind fucking WrestleMania. Shane McMahon could have fell off the fucking Empire State Building through a table. It wouldn't have saved the fucking show. I don't know what else to tell you people. I really don't. WrestleMania, the end, like I said, of the WrestleMania season and we got nothing. Absolutely zero. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm for the first time in my fucking life doing this. I'm fucking speechless. I really am. I am honestly out of words. I'm out of energy. I am out of fucking 
enthusiasm to do this shit like this tonight. WWE has nobody to blame but themselves. Everything about this show was fucking terrible. Everything. There was one or two highlights to this show in six hours. Six hours. We're going to talk about what happened tonight in depth. But you guys, I know, I know most of you agree with me. This show was one of the worst WrestleManias ever, man. I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I really don't. I, I really don't. I, 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 just, I just don't know what to do as far as, as WWE goes tonight. I, it's, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable how WWE can be so fucking clueless. So fucking clueless to everything. And like I stated in my review, they wanted to get this show over with. It, it, it showed tonight. Without question, it showed tonight. I didn't watch none of the pre-show, nor did I care. I'm not going over the pre-show. Nobody gives a shit, okay? Usos beat the Dudleys. Team Total Trash beat Team Bad. And Kalisto beats Ryback. There you go. Who cares? Show starts off with the Intercontinental Championship match. Kevin Owens, The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, Zack Ryder, and Sin Cara, and Stardust. Like I said in my preview... WWE had a hot feud already lined up. Ziggler was thrown into the mix. You could have had a triple threat match. Everybody else in this match belonged in the United States title match. That should have been the ladder match. No question. Miz, Sin Cara, and Zack Ryder, Stardust, don't belong fighting for Intercontinental Championships. I'm sorry. It's just the way I feel. These guys can wrestle all year long. What have they shown you on television? Nothing. So why am I going to believe as a viewer that these guys belong in an Intercontinental Championship match? Oh, they worked their ass off all year. They deserve a WrestleMania moment. Yeah, I worked my ass off all year and I deserve a fucking raise. Am I getting one? No. Tough shit. Obviously, WWE wants to start the fucking show off hot. So they do the ladder match. WWE's going to have a ladder match every year. Right? This is the second year in a row we had a fucking IC title match start to show off. Seven men, four of which didn't deserve a fucking title shot. Why did you get rid of the money in the bank to begin with? At least that would have gave you a plan B. If you did want to change up the main event, in which tonight they should have. Thought Kevin Owens was going to walk away winning this. And I'm not a fan of these ladder matches anymore, man. Same typical generic bullshit. Big spots from everybody. Sin Cara does his spot. The Miz does his spot. Zack Ryder does his spot. Sami Zayn gets his spot. Like I knew he would. Like I knew they would. They trade spots back and forth. And then, all of a sudden, the rest of the guys are sleeping. While two guys are fighting in the ring. Some guy crawls into the ring, climbs up the ladder, prevents the other guy from grabbing the title. Rinse and repeat. It's the same shit. Nothing but 15 minutes of fucking spots. That's all. If you've seen one seven-man ladder match, you've seen them all. This is why I prefer a more intimate match. One that's more toned down. You had Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, who already had a fucking past history, which would have went beautifully at WrestleMania and would have gave us something on the card that people could have remembered after this dreadful night. WWE didn't want to go that route. I would have been okay with a triple threat match. WWE still didn't want to go that route. They wanted to get everybody on the show. Obviously, by the way, the crowd reacted when Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn interacted with one another. These two were the guys who stood out the most. People wanted to see them. This was their match. This should have been their match. It was not. I thought Kevin Owens was going to walk away the winner of this match because ideally that made sense. Because Sami Zayn's on the main roster. He's back for one thing and one thing only, and that is revenge, because as per storyline, Kevin Owens eliminated Sami Zayn from in-ring competition as he went on to get surgery. That was per storyline. We all know how Sami Zayn got hurt. U.S. title open challenge with John Cena, throws his arm up in the air a little bit too rough, tears his rotator cuff. Boom, he's out for seven months. 
I thought that's the route WWE was going to go. Obviously not. Obviously not. All because you guys were tweeting me that the Las Vegas odds had Zack Ryder winning the fucking match. WWE was like, oh my god, YWC, they think Owens is going to win. <laughs> Somewhere scheming in the fucking caves of Stanford, Connecticut. WWE thinks it's bright and a wise decision to fucking have Zack Ryder win the IC title. How fast is he going to lose it on Monday Night Raw? And to who? Seriously. Totally did not make any sense. Now, I'm going to lay this all on the table, right? I have absolutely nothing against Zack Ryder. Yes, he deserves a moment. Yes, he deserves to be on the main roster in a mid-card role. Yes, he's a great in-ring worker. Yes, he has the ability to get over. I've enjoyed his work with Mojo Rawley on NXT. But the Zack Ryder, storyline-wise, when you have Sami Zayn on the main roster, and the only reason why you promoted him was because you needed someone else in the mid-card to feud with Kevin Owens. That made sense. To give that title a spotlight and a feud longevity up until SummerSlam. They said it themselves. They will be doing battle until their last dying breath. They'll be doing this forever. No matter if their fucking face, heel, reversed, doesn't matter. They'll be doing it forever. They will always have a rival in one another. And WWE decides tonight to give the title to Zack Ryder? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Do you honestly think WWE is going to push Zack Ryder? Of course not. They're going to fucking bury him on Monday Night Raw. Guarantee it. I'd be shocked if Zack Ryder holds this title past two weeks. Zack Ryder won the Intercontinental Championship. He got his moment. Fantastic. Guy's on top of the world. Dayton Emma... Got a beautiful woman, and he's got the Intercontinental Championship. He's having a fucking Long Island iced tea tonight somewhere in Dallas before Monday Night Raw. Good for him. But does it make sense? No. Kevin Owens should have won because Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens is your money feud. Now, I'm not saying that's not possible, but why are you switching things mid-WrestleMania at WrestleMania when they don't make sense logically? All for the cheap pop. Kevin Owens would have got a fucking great reaction if he won the match. Because he's respected. And that made sense. Zack Ryder's your new IC title. Dumbfounded. Absolutely dumbfounded I am. Singles match. AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho. I know most of you guys are like me. Tired of it. This is the fourth fucking time we're seeing this match. And I'm gonna fuck... I I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag immediately. I'm gonna fucking pinpoint the elephant in the room here. Because I know everybody was thinking it, and if you didn't think it, please, wisen up to the wrestling product, please. AJ Styles, this was his first WrestleMania. Logically, you think WWE is going to push the hot hand here in AJ Styles. They're going to give AJ Styles his first WrestleMania win, just like everybody expected him to. Because realistically, who wanted to see this match again? I didn't. You didn't. Not many people did. AJ Styles walks into his first WrestleMania, and what do you think the WWE did? <laughs> TNA defective. He thinks he's coming to our land, and he's going to take over. <laughs> AJ Styles loses his WrestleMania debut. So WWE Creative thinks it's a bright idea to have Chris Jericho put over Fandango at WrestleMania, but they don't allow Chris Jericho to put over AJ Styles? Does that make any sense to you? Again, I am dumbfounded. I am honestly losing brain cells over trying to fucking think about this. Why? Why? Now, the match wasn't bad. I don't think these guys are capable of a bad match. But it's rinse and repeat with these guys. Seriously. The match started off slow, and the match dragged. I thought the match was a pretty much a letdown up until the last maybe six, seven minutes. All he needed to do, AJ Styles, was hit a, was hit a Styles Clash. And great job at protecting the Styles Clash, WWE. He performs it on Chris Jericho, and Chris Jericho kicks out. You don't have the guy do it at all, and when he does do it, 
Chris Jericho, of all fucking people, kicks out of the Styles Clash. Great job. Great job there. It was a near fall. That's when the match started to really pick up. But having Jericho hit a code breaker on AJ Styles, that's it? I mean, Fandango walked out of WrestleMania with a win, but AJ Styles puts on a fucking great match with Chris Jericho, and he walks away a loser. I don't get it. I mean, if you put this match up against anything else that happened after it, you're probably looking at the third best match on the fucking show. And he walks away a loser. Speechless. Absolutely speechless. Moving on to the new day. Their entrance was fucking awesome. 20 foot box of fucking bootios. All the bootios in the world. Couldn't save this fucking show. Handicap match. New Day versus the League of Nations. Really was not a handicap match. Wade Barrett was not officially in the match. He was on the outside. It was Rusev, Sheamus, and Del Rio. Three against three. The New Day. Honestly, nobody gave a shit about this match. I, I honestly don't even know why anybody cared to begin with. I mean, the League of Nations is completely fucking terrible. And yes, they are fucking terrible. Sheamus, a mid-card loser. Rusev, a sniveling fucking pussy who was once a great heel or had the fucking makings of a great heel. What did WWE do? They took the US title away from him. They took Lana away from him. They gave him Summer Rae. Next thing you know what he's fucking crying a river of tears over Summer Rae and Summer Rae won't marry him. Give me a fucking break. Now, all of a sudden, I'm supposed to take this fucking asshole seriously? Give me a fucking break. And Alberto Del Rio, could the guy be any more worthless? The fucking pocket lint I have in my work pants is more important than fucking Alberto Del Rio in modern day WWE or current day WWE. Seriously. All three of these guys, and I'm not even including Barrett. Barrett just by the fucking looks of him is, is an embarrassment. Jesus fucking Christ. These guys are fucking absolutely at the bottom of the barrel. Nobody gives a flying fuck. Only reason why these guys were put together was to put Roman Reigns over, and they couldn't even do that. They couldn't even do that. They failed at that, and they fail as a force. Now we're supposed to care because the League of Nations is going against the New Day, who's the hottest tag team in the WWE, and they're incredibly popular, and by default, the League of Nations is going to be booed, they're going to get heel heat by going against a hot face team. No, it doesn't work that way, WWE. If nobody gives a shit, nobody will give a shit. Nobody. And WWE, being that the titles were not on the line, I thought the New Day was going to win. I thought people were going to be happy that the New Day won. Bootios. Everybody has bootios tonight. Give me a second serving of bootios with fucking non-fat milk, please. No, League of Nations won. I'm sitting there again, dumbfounded. Why? What is this going to do for the League of Nations? Okay, you're trying to build momentum. I can respect that. I can respect WWE trying to build some type of momentum for the League of Nations. But how long did their momentum last? Ten seconds? All Wade Barrett had to do was utter the fucking words, there's nobody, no group of individuals that can contest the League of Nations. Nobody could beat them. What happened? McFoley, Shawn Michaels, and Stone Cold Steve Austin all come out. League of Nations hit their peak. They didn't win championships. They just won a WrestleMania match in front of 85,000 fucking people. This should be their highlight. Their WrestleMania moment that was taken away like that. The greatest thing that the League of Nations will be known for was receiving Mr. Sacco, being super kicked by Shawn Michaels, and then stunned while Steve Austin stuns them all into oblivion and just drinks Steve Weisers all over the place for five minutes. That's what the League of Nations are known for. Once again, the League of Nations WrestleMania moment was receiving an ass kicking from three retired WWE Hall of Famers. Congratulations. 
League of Nations. You made it in WWE. Fucking awful. The match had absolutely nothing going for it, going for it just like Jericho and Styles. There was nothing on the line. Why should we care? At this point, WWE, you know, I'm starting to think, oh my god, man, I gotta sit through fucking four more hours of this fucking trash. Then we get the announcement that Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar are happening. Ah, finally. Finally, we have some fucking decent action coming up. It's a no-holds-barred street fight. Keep in mind the term street fight. Okay? Street fight meaning they should leave the arena. They have open access to do whatever they want. I should see fucking camera crews running to the outside of the fucking arena while Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose are fighting in the streets of Dallas. Something, man. Dean Ambrose picks up a fucking sewer cover and just fucking flings it at Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman screaming, running up the sidewalk. Whatever he's fucking yelling at Brock Lesnar. You know? Dean Ambrose should be fucking peeling down stop signs and smashing Brock Lesnar over there. That's a fucking street fight. That is a fucking street fight. I don't know what the fuck you call this. This was not a street fight. This was a fucking PG initiative ball of garbage. I don't believe Brock Lesnar actually... Brock Lesnar doesn't fucking care. He got paid to fucking be at WrestleMania. He got paid whatever fucking t-shirts were sold at the concession stands. He doesn't give a shit. He showed up for fucking 12 minutes. He beat Dean Ambrose's ass. And he got paid. And now he's going home to fuck his wife. That's all. Brock Lesnar doesn't fucking care. This match was a fucking joke. Once again, proves to everybody. Not only was this match a complete waste of time, the story was fucking meaningless and absolutely pointless. What sense did these two have to go one another at WrestleMania? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No outside interference. We see nothing but fucking kendo sticks and steel chairs. I mean, give me a break, man. Be creative with it. Bring out a table. Bring out a ladder. Bring out fucking something, man. A cheese grater. A mailbox. Something, man. Give me a fucking pillow. Have a pillow fight in the ring, man. It's no holes barred. Nothing but kendo sticks and steel chairs. Typical PG initiative trash. I thought Dean Ambrose was going to win, and I thought WWE was going to set us up with Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family going against Brock Lesnar, and the tease was there. The Royal Rumble, they eliminated him from the Rumble. They once again crossed paths for roadblock. Nothing happened. That obviously was thrown out the window. We all thought that Bray Wyatt was going to interfere. There was rumors all over the fucking place. Dave Meltzer reporting plans are placed for Bray Wyatt to interfere in this match. No signs of him. Absolutely no signs. All it took was an F5 on a bunch of steel chairs and the match was fucking over. Zero sense. Zero logic. This match was a fucking joke. An absolute joke. Street fight? Give me a fucking break, man. A fucking Bella Twins pillow fight was more fucking hardcore than this shit. An absolute fucking embarrassment, man. I'm sorry that this match even fucking took place. You got the likes of Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar on pay-per-view in a no-holds-barred match. And the most that they can do is fucking swing a steel chair. Give me a fucking break. The shit that I took this afternoon after Chipotle was more hardcore than this match. Fuck you. Absolute fucking garbage. Lesnar wins. Triple threat match. This is when WWE actually said, you know what? I think we should start putting on a WrestleMania match. Because the first fucking hour and a half was a complete joke. That's not including the pre-show. Triple threat women's match. They finally unveiled the Divas or the Women's Championship. I'm sorry. I gotta get used to not saying Diva anymore. What a joke that term was, huh? Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha. Lita during the match or before the match. I should, or during the pre-show, I should say. Unveil the new women's championship. It's just like the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Toned down, smaller, and with a white strap. Mixed with some red. Looks pretty decent. I'm okay with it. I'm content with it. Lita was sitting at ringside. She was holding the title. She was going to present it to the winner of this match. She actually said the winner of this match will be the first ever WWE Women's Champion. Well, I don't know, man. I guess Trish Stratus was fucking somehow erased from WWE's record books. I guess Lita... Didn't know that she was a fucking women's champion at one point. 
What did you win back in the day? Or did you fucking suffer dementia and suffer from the same disease Vince McMahon is currently suffering from? I don't know. I don't know. Or did you and Corey Graves go fucking smoke a couple of blunts with Snoop Dogg in the back before you hit the fucking ring? I have no idea. I have no idea. Charlotte and Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. It's amazing how I've been hyping the women in WWE because of their work in NXT. Finally, we've seen an NXT-worthy match on WrestleMania, and it took the women to come out after Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose and not only put them to shame, but probably delivered the best match on the whole fucking card after the five hours was over. Seriously. These women put Ambrose and Lesnar to shame. This was the best match of the night. Sasha Banks' is money... Becky Lynch is fucking money. And Charlotte, though I am a little frustrated with the fucking Ric Flair interference every fucking match. Give me a break, WWE. Have this woman win a match on her own without Ric Flair. I understand what it's doing and I understand why you do it. But every fucking match, it's like fucking Bella Twins coming out doing twin magic. How many fucking times can it happen? And how stupid can the same referee be for allowing it to fucking happen every time. Every time. You think the referee was going the back and be like, you know, we've got to keep an eye out on Ric Flair. You know, the fucking wily tricks this guy's up to. Nobody has a fucking idea what's going on. They see it every fucking week and they just allow it to happen. Logic holes and loopholes everywhere in WWE. I just don't understand it. This match was fucking awesome, though. Literally steal the show. Stole the show, I should say. Charlotte ends up winning this match. This is surprising, okay? Surprising, but yet I'm okay with how it ended. Everybody's going to be crying, oh, Becky Lynch. Listen, Becky Lynch ain't going nowhere. Becky Lynch ain't going nowhere, goons. She's going to be right in the thick of things. But Charlotte and Sasha Banks right now are going to be in the forefront, okay? Charlotte retains. Sasha was screwed. Because Ric Flair, while Sasha was on the outside trying to get back into the ring, was prevented by Ric Flair as Ric Flair held her back from sliding underneath the bottom rope and Charlotte took advantage of Becky and the figure eight. The figure eight happened and Becky tapped. That's all. I'm okay with this because Charlotte is great, though I did not like her in the beginning because I thought the Ric Flair thing was a little bit too much. I'm okay with it. Charlotte is the women's champion, and Sasha is going to be the one chasing, and it's going to happen eventually, okay? This is only going to get us invested more in Sasha. This is only going to get us invested more in Becky, and it's going to develop more heat on Charlotte because now people are going to want to see her lose more so due to the fact that their beloved Sasha Banks, our beloved Sasha Banks, has lost. When everybody thought she was going to win with the diary fucking vlogs on YouTube.com, on WWE's YouTube page, and the fucking awards ceremony, and Snoop Dogg coming out, high as a fucking kite, singing her entrance music. All of that, and Charlotte won. Sasha will win the fucking title, eventually. Just enjoy the ride, people. Enjoy the ride. And I hope you enjoyed the match tonight, because honestly, this match... Was matching tonight, and I'm proud of WWE for letting these women go out there and show us what they are made of. These three women actually upstaged all of the men tonight on WrestleMania. And I proudly say that, and I proudly admit that, and there's nothing wrong in that at all. Because finally, finally, we now have a true revolution. Instead of seeing Eva Marie and the fucking Bellas and that fucking sellout page... In a fucking women's championship match, we actually got three women who are better than the men at what they do. Good on them. Charlotte wins. And finally, we now have a true revolution in full form. All we need is Bailey, and I hope Emma can get away from that fucking Total Divas garbage. Give me a fucking break, man. Seriously. Hell in a Cell. This is where WWE made one of many mistakes tonight. Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. This match should have been the main event. This match should have been more than it was. We didn't get any outside interference. 
We didn't get any fucking shenanigans. We didn't see Vince McMahon like I thought we would. This was a huge opening for WWE to just have fun and give us something intriguing going into Monday Night Raw. Zero fucking happened. Zero happened. Just like the virgins who fucking tell me to go watch something else if I don't like it, who haven't had any fucking ass, who never felt a pair of tits before, who never had fucking sexual intercourse, right? Nothing. Nothing happened. Hell in a Cell. Obviously, Hell in a Cell, Shane McMahon, The Undertaker, all this rolled into one nice pretty package. This is all it was. It sold WrestleMania. Based on that and the names alone. Just like Hell in a Cell was fucking promoted as the final encounter with Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. It's going to be Hell in a Cell. That's all they did. They used the, ra the name recognition and the fucking match stipulation to get this over. That's all WrestleMania was. Name recognition. And he had a nice little stipulation or two to it. Undertaker loses. He's out of WrestleMania. If Shane McMahon wins, he gets control of the company. Typical WWE agenda. Now, I will say this match... Shane McMahon looked good. He looked good. He looks in fantastic shape. He hung his own. He hung around with The Undertaker. But he did look a little bit out of his element. Okay? I heard people uttering, this is boring. This is fucking slow. This match sucks. And I'm sitting there, drinking my fucking beer. And I'm looking at you fucking people tweet me, oh, this sucks. Get off my TV. I'm bored, I'm falling asleep, hand me NyQuil, I'm gonna go jerk off, I'm gonna go watch Nakamura again for the fucking 16th time. Give it fucking time to develop, man. This is Shane McMahon, his first match in fucking eight years. What do you want, what do you want, to come in there on a fucking, uh, what do you want, to come down on fucking angel wings and just magically fucking just pick it up again? Seriously, you want him, you want him to come flying in on a, on a fucking horse, like, like uh, Aragon and Lord of the Rings? Starts fucking slashing swords and fucking killing goblins all over the place. Give me a fucking break, man. Seriously. Guy's been away for fucking seven years. Give him a fucking break. Yeah, he was out of his element. Yeah, it was slow and methodical at times, but this is the fucking Undertaker. He's going against a 51-year-old Undertaker who has bad knees. Give him a fucking break, man. Match was going to pick up. Like I stated everywhere, I knew something was going to happen. And those same people that were fucking telling me, oh, I'm going to go watch Nakamura again for the fucking 28th time and jerk off to the fucking match. Oh, it's boring. You were the same people tweeting me, oh my god, JD was right. Of course I was right, asshole. You got hell in a cell in front of 85,000 fucking people at WrestleMania. Of course, Shane McMahon, or something, is going to happen. There were rumors going around that Shane McMahon was fucking practicing a 48 foot fall obviously this wasn't 48 feet but he could have fell off the fucking twin towers and it wouldn't have saved the fucking show but i will say this wasn't the greatest hell in a cell match it will you know i don't even think it's in the top five hell in a cell matches to be quite honest with you i was happy to see shane mcmahon back undertaker looks great i don't want the undertaker to go anywhere i, I want him to stick around as long as his body holds up I didn't want this to be his last WrestleMania. I didn't think it was going to be his last WrestleMania. I honestly thought The Undertaker was going to lose due to some outside interference. But when all was said and done, Undertaker did get the win. And he got the win because of Shane McMahon taking a risk and putting it all on the line as he was sitting at the poker table and he fucking put everything on the line. All in. And he lost. He had three of a kind, three aces. Three fucking aces. And the guy across from him, The Undertaker, had a fucking four of a kind. Four kings. That's all it was. It was a poker match, and Shane McMahon took a risk. Now, I knew he was going to jump off the cage, or something along those lines. He was getting flung off the cage. In this case, in this instance, he jumped off the cage with a fucking elbow drop. Okay? I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was fearful for, for Shane McMahon's fucking life. Honestly... We all knew the Hell in the Cell was a lot larger than the one Mick Foley took his dive off of, but when you see Shane McMahon and the fucking drop via the camera angle that they had, I don't give a shit who you are. You, I know for a fact you fear for this guy's life. You feared for what happened. If he was off by one fucking cunt hair, he was gone. He was gone. I give Shane McMahon all the props in the world for doing what he did. Wasn't as good as Foley. 
the moment and the, the whole fucking... The whole imagery of this when it actually happened will never live up to Foley because Michael Cole can suck fucking Jim Ross's balls. Fuck Michael Cole. And fuck JBL and fuck Byron Saxton, man. They didn't add anything to this fucking moment. In fact, they made it worse than what it was. They were fucking trying their balls off and they failed. Oh my god, he's fucking bro. Whatever the fuck they were saying, man. I tried to zone them out and I tried to focus on Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon dove off the fucking top of the cage, and I was, I was literally fucking scared for this moment, but he nailed it, and it was beautiful, it made the match, and after that, Shane McMahon, ballsy and all, still wanted more, Undertaker gave him more, gave him a fucking tombstone, one, two, three, and that was it. Other than that, Shane McMahon pulled off his usual spots. He did the coast-to-coast -coast with a fucking trash can as The Undertaker laid in the corner. Shane McMahon still got it, man. 47 years old. This guy is athletic as fuck. A great fucking stuntman. In the annals of WWE history, when you think about extreme spots, Shane McMahon is top three, no question, man. This was one of those moments that's going to live on next to Foley. Nowhere close to what Foley did. But if you're going to think about Hell in a Cell and extreme moments in WWE, this one will be remembered forever. Because the image and the scene of it and just the moment of it when they showed the replay, it, it was just unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Kudos to Shane McMahon. It made the match. The only thing I did not like about this is that it was slow. Shane McMahon looked out of place and there was absolutely no intrigue whatsoever. And it goes back to what I said. It looks like this match really didn't mean anything. There was no outside interference. The storyline was really rushed. Seems like they pieced it together last minute. WWE didn't think this one out. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. And we can only hope that WWE really is going to hit the reset button here. I don't know what's happening. I honestly don't know what's happening. Which makes... Monday Night Raw, all that more important, because we're all going to watch. It's the biggest Monday Night Raw of the year. All right, so Shane McMahon loses. Undertaker wins. After the match, medics come and wheel Shane McMahon out, and he raises a thumbs up to the crowd as they give him a standing ovation as he's fucking ushered to the back on a stretcher. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. More like the Get Off My TV Battle Royal. Everybody was talking about a possible Cesaro, John Cena, Randy Orton, this one, that one, Goldberg, Kurt Angle. Some of you fucking goons mentioned Jeff Hardy. I don't know where you got Jeff Hardy from, but WWE, with one of the better decisions of the night, an NXT guy won it. Just like an NXT guy should have won it last year with Hideo Tommy. This year, Baron Corbin won it. Is Baron Corbin making his way to the main roster? Certainly looks like it. Certainly looks like it. Out of all the people WWE is going to promote, they're going to promote Baron Corbin. Which I don't have a problem with because I enjoy Baron Corbin's work. I think he's going to be great. I think he has a lot of upside. Certainly has the look and the size that Vince McMahon likes. Speaking of size, Shaquille O'Neal was in this match. Yes, former NBA player. Shaquille O'Neal, who's now a fucking color commentator for TNT. He's in the fucking match. He eliminated somebody. Who the fuck did he eliminate? He eliminated, uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? Damien Sandow. Great WrestleMania moment, Sandow. Thanks for coming, bro. WrestleMania moment, he gets eliminated by a fucking TNT basketball commentator. And he's still over. He's still over. Mark Henry didn't win it. Fucking Tatanka was in the match. I didn't see him until midway through. You got fucking Tatanka over there, fucking dancing around. Fandango was in it. He started dancing. He was eliminated in fucking 10 seconds. Slater, Axel, Gar Goldust, R-Truth. Connor, Victor, Tyler Breeze was in it. In the end, Baron Corbin won it. Good fucking decision there. Got to see if Baron Corbin is going to remain on the main roster or if he's going to go back down to NXT. And this is when WrestleMania took a fucking dive off Mount Everest. And I don't think WWE is going to recover, man. I really don't. A lot of you share the same sentiments with me. The Rock came in, and he's fucking flamethrowing everybody as if he's fucking playing Doom all over again. Fucking slaying demons and fucking going against fucking Hell Barons and Doom. Fucking flame, uh, a flamethrower all over the place. Guy comes into the ring, he's sweating bullets. And all of a sudden, he's, inter he's interrupted by Bray Wyatt. 
And I'm like, oh my god, maybe Bray Wyatt is really going to insert himself and force himself into this title match. And at this point, it's fucking 11 o'clock. At this point, it's 11 o'clock. WWE paid pay-per-view fucking providers an extra hour to maintain WrestleMania being on the air. For what? I don't know. What did we get? We got an absolute fucking complete waste of time and a segment that killed WrestleMania and sucked everybody's mood out of the show. If you do not think so, I, uh, you don't have a fucking brain in your head, bro. I don't know how you're going to wake up in the morning to go to work and function in the morning. Because you're that fucking retarded. Some people would tweet me, Oh, oh JD, Bray Wyatt wasn't buried. Bray Wyatt wasn't buried. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me he wasn't buried? Eric Rowan lost in six seconds tonight. Braun Strowman didn't do anything. Luke Harper's fucking injured for seven months. And Bray Wyatt is standing in the ring with The Rock. Receiving an F5. Oh, not an F5. Might as well receive an F5. A fucking FU. Attitude adjustment. Rock bottoms. People's elbow. I thought he was going to come out there and literally save the fucking show. Sure, everybody would have rather seen Bray Wyatt win the WWE Championship than whatever the fuck they had going on. And at this point, I thought The Rock was going to insert himself into the fucking title match. John Cena comes back. A whole segment. I wish we could fucking blink our eyes and do all over again, man. This is the plan WWE has for the Wyatt family? This is the plan? Seriously. People are telling me, and people tweet me, Oh, JD, Bray Wyatt wasn't buried. He was on WrestleMania and in the presence of The Rock and John Cena. He wasn't buried. Are you fucking out of your mind? I mean, what more can this man go through? Big Show, Kane, Ryback... And now on WrestleMania, made to look like a fucking embarrassment in front of 85,000 fucking people, gets his ass kicked. He was better off not even being at the show. He was better off not even being in the building. He was better off not even having a hotel booked for this fucking piece of shit. Are you fucking serious? This is your plan for the Wyatt family. If you thought the Wyatt family was fucking buried now, forget about it, man. The fucking grave is covered, and WWE is fucking desecrating the gravesite and pissing on the fucking tombstone. It's over. It's absolutely fucking over. Eric Rowan versus The Rock at WrestleMania. That's going down in the fucking history books. He wins in six seconds. How do you think Eric Rowan's going to feel waking up in the morning? Yeah, I felt good, man. I lost to The Rock at WrestleMania in six seconds. You don't think he's going to look back on his fucking career and ask himself, look himself in the mirror, what the fuck am I doing? Six seconds? Is this all I'm worth? A rock bottom to The Rock? In six seconds? Give me a fucking break, bro. He would have been fucking happy if he had sexual intercourse with fucking Luna Star, a fucking Pornhub porn star for six seconds. Give me a fucking break, bro. Absolutely pathetic. I don't believe this actually fucking happened, man. Triple H versus Roman Reigns, this all led into a fucking title match that at this point, nobody wanted to fucking see, nobody cared about. This match was putting people to sleep. Everybody watching this shit exactly knew what was going to happen. Triple H was going to come out and fucking be cheered. Roman Reigns was going to come out and be booed. I don't know if I was watching fucking Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Velocity, Sunday Night Heat, WWE Main Event. I don't know if I was watching a fucking house show in Boise, Idaho. I don't know what the fuck I was watching, man, but it didn't feel like WrestleMania. Certainly didn't feel like WrestleMania, man. And all I kept saying was WWE needs to have something happen here or this show is totally fucking garbage. What do you think they did? Did they do anything? Did they have a Goldberg come out? Did a Kurt Angle return? Did a Finn Balor come and make a fucking demon entrance with the Bullet Club? Of course not. Nothing happened. WWE thought this was the right idea to have this match go on in the main event and to have Roman Reigns win clean and to make Triple H look like a fool as he held the sledgehammer, right? Another loophole. During the end of this match, Triple H tried to use a sledgehammer, and he still had possession of the sledgehammer, and the referee did not disqualify him from a match that still was billed as a regular one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one match without the no-DQ stipulation. So where was the DQ, ref? Huh? Where was the DQ? No DQ. Roman Reigns gets his Superman punch and his spear, and we go off the air with fireworks that Vince McMahon fucking thinks Roman Reigns deserves and a WWE champion that nobody can fucking stand, no heel turn, no outside interference, all in all, you put this in the fucking blender, you hit start, and what do you have as an end result? The worst fucking main event for a WrestleMania in recent memory, man. We haven't seen a WrestleMania main event this bad since John Cena and The Miz. 
This WrestleMania was fucking awful. Without question, nothing made sense on this show. The women of all fucking people, and I mean this with no disrespect whatsoever, stole the fucking show. Absolutely one of the worst builds for a show. One of the worst WrestleManias ever. Top three easily. The Wyatts were buried. A fucking no holds bar street fight that Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose took place, or you know, took part in, with 12 minutes of absolutely nothing. A fucking Zack Ryder IC title win that's going to be abolished tomorrow on Monday Night Raw. No Sting, no Finn Balor, no Bullet Club, nothing. Nothing. This show was terrible. And for the people who tweeted me, and for the people who tweeted me, telling me, if you don't like it, don't watch. Go fuck yourself. This show was a complete fucking joke and was the culmination of everything that we received for the last year. I did not expect anything else. I was hoping beyond the shadow of a doubt that something else would happen and nothing happened. We literally got nothing. All we did was get our hands out at the end of the fucking show begging begging for something and WWE walked by us as we're fucking panhandling on the streets of New York without even fucking reaching in their pocket and giving me a fucking uh, a nickel a dime a couple of pennies to fucking go and try and buy some food they left us empty handed to starve with literally nothing to show for it WrestleMania 32 was one of the worst WrestleManias ever top three by far illogical, shitty booking, nothing important happened on this show, we didn't get anything that's going to bleed into Monday Night Raw, we didn't get any conclusion to anything, and the only thing that we got was a conclusion to a pitiful, disgusting, dreadful, nightmarish WrestleMania season that will go down as one of the worst WrestleMania builds in the history of this event. Seriously, injuries or no injuries, WWE could have done so much better. I could have booked this fucking show jerking myself off in the fucking shower for 15 minutes. I could have put together a better fucking show than this piece of shit that we've seen tonight. And yes, NXT Dallas absolutely blew away everything about WrestleMania 32. And how does that feel, Vince? How does that feel that a promotion Kevin Dunn, your fucking right-hand man, doesn't even respect, blew away WrestleMania. I don't give a shit how many fucking fireworks and how many fucking feet Shane McMahon jumps off of Hell in a Cell. Nothing ever came close. Nothing even had a chance to come close to what happened at TakeOver Dallas. I'm done. I'm going to finish this beer. I'm going to upload this fucking review and I'm going to sleep because this is an absolute waste of my fucking time. If you don't agree with me, don't watch. But I know more than, I'd say 90% of you are going to agree with what happened tonight. Seriously, that's my WrestleMania review. Thank you for 45,000. We're on our way to 50. Hit the thumbs up if you did agree, and I'm going to leave you a fucking poll in the video. Was WrestleMania 32 good? Yes or no? I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that. I'll be back on Monday. Biggest Monday Night Raw of the year. We're going to talk about it. We're going to review it after the show. Join me then. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. Everything you need is down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the weekend. Thank you for following me. Gonna be great, man. Monday Night Raw. I'm look I'm actually looking forward to Monday Night Raw more than WrestleMania, so we'll see what happens. This is WWE's last chance. If not, this company is going to be another fucking colossal failure in 2016. I'm I'm actually gonna go watch Nakamura and Sami Zayn all over again because I need to fucking clear the six hours of fucking rubbish that we got on this show, man. I'm JD. I'll see you back here for Monday Night Raw review. Until then, I will talk to you all later, man. Thank you guys for watching.